Hello and welcome to Jim's Tabletop Wargaming. The most popular video on this channel by far is the Start Painting Kit for Space Marines, released back in 9th edition, which I painted with just the included paints and a brush from that kit. With the recent release of Warhammer 40k 10th edition, this kit has been replaced and this provides me with an opportunity to revisit painting ultramarines with the skill and experience I have gained in the last few years, hopefully passing that knowledge on to you. Like previous kits, the model is a push fit, has a starter brush, and it comes with four paints, a shade, and a technical paint for basing. You will need at a minimum a set of clippers to free the models from the sprue, and either a craft knife or a mould line remover tool to tidy up the mould residue. Follow the number guide on the box to identify the part numbers on the sprue. Use your clippers to remove the parts. It's worth doing one model at a time to avoid confusion or accidentally mixing parts as each model's pose and sculpts are slightly different. Clean up any extra unwanted bits of plastic such as attachment points from where you just clipped and any mould lines that are glaringly obvious. You can do this by carefully scraping and cutting these parts away. Be careful to cut away from yourself, keep your fingers clear of the blade and use minimal pressure as to not shear off any details or harm yourself. Once you are happy with the results, go ahead and clean any plastic dust and debris from both the model and your painting area as to avoid any lumps of plastic getting into your paints. You can either fully assemble your model for painting or you can paint in sub-assembly to allow you to access the hard to reach areas like the details on the backpack and the pauldrons. As with the previous kits, I will only be using the included paints and single brush for this video. As such, I won't be priming the model, as no primer is included in the box. If you have access to primer, now is the time to apply it. Priming will give you a much better overall experience and finish. For the painting stage, you will need some clean water, a paper towel or kitchen roll, and for a palette we'll just use this packaging. Be sure that your painting area is suitable for accidental messes or anything like that. Don't ruin a good dining table for instance. To start we will give our paints a good shake to make sure they are well mixed and the colour is consistent. Then begin with a coat of black paint. To do this I am thinning the paint slightly with water so it flows from the brush smoothly. We will want to avoid ruining the details by clogging it with thick paint. You might find the first few coats are quite transparent, but that's perfectly fine. Just allow it to dry and add another coat. Don't forget to clean your brush off between each stage. Once all the grey areas are covered over completely, we can move on to the blue sections. Try to avoid any areas you want to keep black, such as the joints between panels, vents, pipes, eyes, and his additional equipment such as the pistol holster. Mistakes will happen, so keep track of them and go back and correct them between stages. Now we can apply the metallic details such as the chest and respiratory pipes. Once again, correcting mistakes as we go. Once dry, we can move on to the shade stage. You can apply this straight from the pot in small amounts to cover all of the metallic parts. We will also add some shade to the recessed areas and creases like so. Once fully dry, you should have something that looks like this. Go back in with the blue and tidy up these lines and anywhere that might be too thick. It's best to use quite a thin coat here to keep some of that gradient between the blue and the shaded areas. I'm going to deviate from the box art here and start mixing paints on the palette to create a slightly lighter blue. The trick here is not to go crazy with the white, as it only needs to be slightly lighter than the regular blue. Clean your brush thoroughly before going back to each pot of paint just to ensure you don't contaminate them. Thin this paint quite a bit and give all the blue sections a thin coat of this mix, concentrating towards the middle of the panels and avoid going too close to the shaded sections. This will add some colour variation and boost the vibrancy of the blue. Thank you. 
Now we want to add some further highlights to edges and panel lines by mixing together another light blue, this time with more white so it stands out from the rest of the colour. Using these separate parts of the palette will make it easier to match the colour if you need to mix any more of it. The paints tend to dry slightly darker than they are when they're wet, so keep that in mind. It doesn't need to be exact, small deviations won't be too noticeable in the end. Adding edge highlights takes a steady hand. Try to keep a fine point to your brush and try to rub it along the sides like so, where possible. Already this looks better than the box art. Let's keep it going by doing the same thing with the black details. Start by creating a very dark grey and apply the same as before. Now edge highlight with a slightly lighter grey. We don't need to do all of the edges, just the most obvious bits. The body is now pretty much done. So ensure you have the basic colours on the hard to reach parts of the arms and gun. Attach these parts by gently pushing them into place. Many of the steps here are the same as before. I prefer to paint the highlights when the arms are attached, as the keen-eyed among you might have noticed that too much handling of the model can rub away some of those details. Add the white details to the pauldron, and once dry, follow those up with a shade around the outside. The rest of the blue, black and metallic details have been done using the previous step shown. As for the end of the flamer, we will be adding a scorched effect by dry brushing on some black. We do this by wiping the excess paint from your brush and gently brush it on the end of the weapon. Once dry, go over this once more with the shade, but do not cover the whole thing, just the first two thirds of it. The last stage is to get the base finished. Add the technical paint all over the top part of the base, avoiding the rim as much as possible. Using the same dry brush method as before, add a small amount to the bottom of the legs also. Then, while it's still wet, apply some water to these areas to pull the colour into the recesses. This will give a more accurate look to the model, as this marine has likely been foot slogging through the battlefield and would be a little dirty around the boots. Leave this to fully dry, it may take longer than the rest of the paints. Once dry, apply the shade wash liberally all over the base and a small amount to the legs. Now that's dry, add a slight dry brush of the technical all over the base, being careful to just skim the tops of the texture, apply a small amount to the legs also. Finally, we can finish the rim with a coat of black paint.
And there we are, a vast improvement over the box art and my previous video. Hopefully you found this useful. Please like and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments if you followed along at home and I will see you next time.